Hey guys, Colin here, and welcome back to the channel where the Bible and critical thinking meet to give you real Christian commentary about the things that matter. Thanks so much for watching. Let's get into the video. So today we're going to do a review of the organization called BioLogos. If you're a Christian and you enjoy reading about the Christian worldview, especially as it pertains to science, you may have heard of them. As an organization, they have been directly endorsed by Timothy Keller, who is one of the most famous pastors in our nation. It has also been endorsed by famous Anglican scholar N.T. Wright, a man whose books are read on many seemingly orthodox Christian college campuses in these days. The organization was also founded by Christian scientist Francis Collins, who is probably the most highly regarded Christian in academia at this point. According to their own website, BioLogos exists to, quote, explore God's word and God's world to inspire authentic Christian faith for today, end quote. The website goes on saying, quote, our vision is faith and science working together hand in hand, end quote. So the organization claims to exist to recognize God's lordship over the world and the fact that he created the world, and it also claims to educate Christians about these things from the scientific perspective. But ladies and gentlemen, if you take a deeper look at BioLogos, you will quickly find that this is not a faithful Christian organization whatsoever. In fact, they are extremely compromised, doctrinally speaking, and that is what this video is going to be about. In an article written at BioLogos by contributor Joseph Bankard, he writes, quote, God does not send Jesus to die. God does not require Jesus' death to forgive humanity's sin. And as a result, God is not motivated by retribution or righteous anger. Instead, the incarnation is motivated by love." End quote. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the biggest problem we have in modern churches today, if I may be so bold. We have large groups of people who have actually exalted love over the gospel message itself in their churches. God can't be angry. He's loving. God would not send Jesus to die a horrible death. After all, he's a loving God. And behind all of this is the arrogant assumption that we know God's character better than he does. This is the underlying heresy that is beneath virtually all the false teaching that we see today. We shouldn't preach sermons on sin or repentance. God is a God of love. So let's preach about love. We shouldn't call out homosexuality or transgenderism. God is loving. He wouldn't want us to do that. Why shouldn't women be allowed to plant churches and be pastors? God is loving. Surely God wouldn't say that women can't be pastors. That would be unloving of him. Do you see the trend that runs through all of this stuff? The idea here is that we know better than God, and we can reinterpret his word in whatever way we see fit, as long as we do so in the name of what? Love. Now that we understand the forces behind all of this, let's move forward and refute this ridiculous article published by BioLogos, which again is a Tim Keller and N.T. Wright approved organization. The article starts out saying, quote, God does not send Jesus to die, end quote. And this is among the most bullheaded statements I've ever seen come from the mind of a so-called Christian. It is a denial of the gospel message itself. In Luke 22:42, before Christ's crucifixion, he prayed to the Father saying, quote, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done, end quote. So Jesus prayed that the Father's will would be done, and after that prayer, he was crucified at the hands of the Romans. When we connect these dots here, it becomes clear that it was the Father's will for Christ to be crucified and to die for our sins. Jesus tells us as much. The Father did indeed send Christ to die for our sins, and you'd have to be completely biblically illiterate to suggest otherwise. The good authors over at BioLogos may be doing their darndest to bring science and Christianity together, but it is wrong to try to accomplish this goal through allowing heretical and gospel-denying articles to be posted on your platform. But of course there are some people who, wishing to be charitable, would suggest that it is possible that this article was being posted simply as an oversight made by the BioLogos editors. Perhaps they did not thoroughly read the article before they posted it. And in response to this particular objection, I would say that BioLogos has produced several other suspicious articles in the past, link in description. Articles that have made the case that the Bible contains errors and that certain claims in the Bible can be proven inaccurate by science. These things have been said multiple times and in multiple different articles over at BioLogos. So this is the pattern of BioLogos's ministry, that they deny and twist the scriptures. They're not overall a good ministry that makes a few small mistakes. They're an overall bad ministry that makes many big mistakes as a result of them being bad. There's a big difference there. These horrific Heretical statements are not the bug of BioLogos, they are the feature. So with that said, let's move into the second part of the article, which says, quote, God does not require Jesus' death to forgive humanity's sin, end quote. Oh really, BioLogos? God doesn't require death, does he? Well, what were all those Old Testament sacrifices about again? 
What about when God killed the firstborn of Egypt? What about when God sent the Israelites to kill the Canaanites? Oh, those examples are from the Old Testament, you say, and you're looking for something in the New Testament. Well, last time I checked, God struck Ananias and Sapphira dead in Acts chapter 5. You see, the idea that God would never kill someone in his holy wrath or anger is absolutely false, and it contradicts the clear testimony of the scriptures. More than this, the idea that God did not require Jesus' death to forgive humanity's sin, that's not just false, it's downright heresy. This is not Christianity, folks. It's something entirely different. Isaiah 53 verse 5 says, quote, But he, Christ, was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. End quote. God required Jesus' death and chastisement to forgive us of our iniquities, transgressions, and sins. And this is not merely one of many possible doctrines a Christian can either take or leave. This is an essential doctrine to Christianity. This idea undergirds the gospel message itself. And Romans 1.16 says, quote, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. End quote. You see, without believing in the necessity of Christ's atonement on the cross, we lose the very power of salvation itself. Again, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a small mistake being made by a largely good organization. This is rank heresy and a denial of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The fact that it's coming from an organization endorsed by Tim Keller, well, that makes it even more concerning. But I will say, the fact that it's coming from an organization in BioLogos that's trying to reconcile the Bible with science, that's entirely unsurprising to me. These organizations are especially popular among Christian academics, and they are most often a slippery slope that leads to theological liberalism. Beware of anyone who claims that the Bible and secular scientists need to be reconciled and in agreement with one another. The people who say this will almost always sacrifice the Bible on the altar of the university. So with all that said, let's move into what is perhaps the most concerning section of the quote we read earlier. The article published by BioLogos goes on saying, quote, As a result, God is not motivated by retribution or righteous anger. Instead, the incarnation is motivated by love. End quote. And now we get down to the root of the problem, ladies and gentlemen. God cannot be angry or pour out his anger on his son as a retribution for our sins because God is motivated only by love. This philosophy is many things, but it is certainly not Christian. Psalm 711 says, quote, God is a righteous judge and a God who feels indignation every day, end quote. God is a righteous and loving God, yet he feels indignation and wrath not just every once in a while, but every single day. Isaiah 53 verse 10 says, quote, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him, that is Jesus. He has put him to grief when his soul makes an offering for guilt, end quote. It was the will of God to crush Jesus Christ, that he might make an offering that would cover his elect people. This is part and parcel of the gospel. You cannot ignore God's wrath or his punishment and claim to be a consistent, born-again, Bible-believing Christian. Why? Because God's wrath and holy anger are an essential part of how and why Jesus died for our sins. To say that God could not have wrath on Jesus is to say that you know better than God. You have a better plan than him. You are more moral than God is. Oh, I know God's word says that, but surely it can't be the case, because according to my standard of God's love, he's not allowed to do that. What an arrogant statement to make. Moreover, Romans 5.8 says, quote, But God shows his love for us in that, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. End quote. So it is abundantly clear that Jesus' death is the greatest manifestation of God's love for us that we could possibly have. The cross is not a contradiction of God's love. It is the fruit of God's love. It's the result of it. And Christians who are truly born again will understand this because it is our greatest hope and peace in this troubled life. So in conclusion, please avoid the temptation of thinking that you know better than God. This is the root of all pride. Submit yourselves to the standard of God's word and let him be the Lord of the universe, not yourself. Let him increase and let yourself decrease. And please stay away from BioLogos as well as any other organization that contradicts God's word and the glory of his gospel. Pray that the author and the organization here would repent of this false teaching and that they would turn to the truth of God's word. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked that video, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you never miss another one. If you didn't like that video for any reason, then I invite you to watch my Frequently Asked Questions video, link in description, where I deal with common objections and define the purpose and goal of my channel using scripture.
This channel is funded by generous donations from my amazing patrons. If you'd like to help us put out more videos just like this one, hit the link in the description or go to patreon.com slash Colin A. Miller. You can donate to my ministry there and earn tons of rewards just like these. And until next time, fight for truth, never surrender, and keep your eyes open. Thank you, and God bless.